Welcome into Action Island presented by FanDuel alongside some of the best in the business. Tim Kalinowski, Brian Matthews, prop bet guy. I'm Megan Payton. Happy week two, Sunday night football edition. If you're new to Action Island, it's a game show-esque style show. We have our panel present two bets. We'll vote one off, vote one on the island. And at the end, you'll have a three-leg same game parlay. I will use this time to brag a little bit because it's week two. And we have already hit a same game parlay. A same game parlay at plus 1583 payout. Our Thursday night crew also went 6-0. and Fellas, I don't say this to stir the pot, but it is starting some fuel to the fire. Are we ready for the competition? Are you guys ready to win a parlay this week? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's happening. And I think we also need to keep in mind, look, through one week, we were given the worst game in NFL so far. Oh. The Giants versus the Cowboys. So, look, I'm feeling good about this week. I think we've got a good one. I think this is the week that we're hitting. And then I think we're going to be talking to them next week about what they feel about us catching up. Hey, this Giants-Cowboys game, I mean, I was all over Giants, really disappointing. I I'm still hopeful in New York, but I digress. We've got to get a three-leg parlay. I think we got some good juju, though. It's already week two. Action Island's off to a great start. Stick around if you want a same-game parlay with a good payout on FanDuel Sportsbook. We are presented by FanDuel. Get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed, plus $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV when you bet $5 on any week two game. This is for new users in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wyoming. Terms and conditions apply. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Let's do it, boys. Time to build a same-game parlay. Prop bet guy, you're going to start us off. Tim wants to change it up. He feels like if we start with the lineup looking a little different, might give us some good luck. How do you feel about it, prop bet guy? Can you give us your first leg and what you're looking at? Yeah, well, you know what, Tim, I think was the only one to hit a leg last week. So he <laughs> what he says goes this week. So I'm down. I will lead off. Um, all right. Number one for me, just the lean. Both of these are just leans for me so far. Uh Tua Tagovailoa. Yes, I did practice how to pronounce his last name out loud several times. Over one and a half passing touchdowns. Uh I believe it's at about one minus one forty six, a little juicy, but it you know the juice gets extinguished extinguished in a same game parlay. So why am I on this? Uh, Miami seventh highest pass play percentage in twenty twenty two. We saw them run sixty nine percent of pass plays in week one. Yes, they were battling from behind pretty much all game, but I do expect Mike McDaniel to kind of try to expose Belichick through the air like he did last year uh, when Tua was active. Last year, we did see the Dolphins inside the 10-yard line. They only had five rushing touchdowns, and they had 20 passing touchdowns. So I'm not too concerned if they do get down towards the, the red zone and the end zone. Um, I still think Tua is going to be throwing. It's the linchpin of this team. Look, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, I'm not going to blow minds here. They're very, very good. Um, but Tua has shown when it comes to touchdowns, he will spread the ball around Smythe, Berrios, Craycraft. They're all capable down as we get towards the red zone. And quite frankly, Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle don't need to be in the red zone to sniff a touchdown. So I do think this game will be a little back and forth when the Dolphins have the ball. I think they will be trying to uh, go as quick as possible and score as much as possible to try to keep the defense on their toes. So I do like to, uh, to throw at least two touchdown passes. Yeah, I like where you're headed. Uh, Tua had three passing touchdowns last week. However, you know he hasn't had two or more passing touchdowns against the Patriots in his career. I say it's changing because right now Miami is the best offense in football. I was all over them this offseason. I'm feeling fantastic. I got Tyreek on my fantasy team, so I'm feeling really happy. Uh, Doug, what else are you looking at as an option number two for our first leg? All right, so for option number two, I'm going to the other quarterback. Same prop, but I'm going under one and a half passing touchdowns for Mac Jones, who has a significantly easier last name to pronounce. Yes. Uh, for the Patriots, I'm expecting a super run-heavy offense. We saw the Chargers absolutely gash the Dolphins' run defense last week. 234 rush yards, 
Uh, the Chargers were not good rush defense last year either. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson, who I know we'll talk about in a sec, he was battling a stomach bug all week. Um, I do like him to to kind of come through this week and potentially bang one in, maybe even Zeke Elliott. Um, I'm just not seeing too many opportunities once we get down into the red zone where Mac will be throwing. I think they will lean on the ground game. Uh, last year, we only saw 29 pass attempts for Mac Jones inside of the red zone uh, in the 14 games he played. Yes, new offensive coordinator this year. He looks a little bit more comfortable, but it's still Mac Jones and... I don't know if Belichick really trusts him in, in that gold zone as Nathaniel Hackett likes to call it. Um, and my last bullet point, the, the Patriots pass catchers, they're just not great. Uh, you know, capable guys like born Juju, uh, Gesicki as well. But when it comes down to it, I do think they will be looking to hand the ball off and go kind of right up the middle, which is where the chargers were just at, or sorry. Yes. The chargers were just absolutely gashed last week. Bill Belichick's Sorry, the Chargers the yeah. Dolphins. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. And, and, and now they're going to be facing a Patriots defense that should be a bit tougher than the Chargers. Bill Belichick's bread and butter, slowing things down, relying on the run. I am only worried because if the Dolphins are up, Patriots are going to be playing from behind, which means we could see more pass attempts, especially with Bill O'Brien's new um, offense, him coming in as the offensive coordinator. Him and Mac Jones might be connecting a bit more. All right, we have two options here. We've got Tua over one and a half passing touchdowns, or you can go Mac Jones under one and a half passing touchdowns. Fellas, get to writing. The voting begins. All right, put your votes up. What are we looking at for our first leg? Tua, 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 and a drawing from Tim. What do we have there? Is that a dolphin? Yeah, I tried. It was my dolphin. Uh, hey. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, it's um, looks kind of like I, a seal. I'd yeah, say it looks like a seal. Was, yeah. Like, but I, I, it's not bad. Tim, yeah. I, I like the effort. I drew I like it on my effort. thigh. I'm, I'm balancing it on my thigh. Okay. <laughs> you know what was it you drew the other last week? And it was actually it was actually pretty good. Uh, I knew I said you should have drawn a heart, and you said you couldn't. But okay, we'll 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 discuss Tim's <laughs> artist uh, abilities later on. Tua is the clear play here. Over one and a half passing touchdowns. I'm high on this. I actually just bet on this and gave it out on FanDuel a few hours ago. Tua is going to light things up. It might not become as simple against the char as it did against the Chargers. However, this offense is just stacked. Tim, we talked a little bit about your dolphin drawing, but why are you looking at Tua? over instead of Mac Jones under. Wow. I still, for the life of me, trying to remember what I drew a picture of. I know. Of what was week. it? I know my picks, not my drawings. That's all I'm thinking I, I, about. It was, some, it, was, it was something good, but it clearly didn't stick. Regardless. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. We're all obviously stuck in everyone's mind. Regardless, <laughs> I, I think two is the play here. I mean, I think prop bet guy uh, hit the nail on the head. I don't want much to do with Mac Jones. I'm a Patriots fan. I watch a lot of Patriots. It's still, I'm not quite sure. I think that, um, look, Dolphins are explosive. And I think the best part about uh, Doug's point is that, that they can score from just about anywhere. They don't yeah. have to necessarily be in the red area for that to cash. They can hit the long bombs. So let's go to them. A hundred percent. And Jalen Waddle, by the way, I feel like he got overshadowed despite him having 78 yards with only four receptions, averaging nearly 20 yards. We all talked about Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle up for a big game, potentially getting in the end zone with Tua. Uh, by the way, Tim, it was a chef. Were we talking Dalvin Cook uh, or James yeah, Cook? Yeah, That's yeah, where I'm. Yeah. It, you had a magnificent chef and honestly better than the Dolphin. We might have to bring that back. And at the end of the year, we'll rate all of your all of your drawings and we'll compare it to Darren Ravel, who likes to get involved in the artist world as well. Brian, let's help us get back on subject. Tua over Mac Jones. Why are we looking at the over for Tua to get in the end zone? Two passing touchdowns. Well, first, life's a little too short to bet the under, especially on a game where the Patriots can get behind. And look, I truly think Bill O'Brien has introduced something to this New England team. I mean, we saw Mac Jones pass the ball 54 times, I believe. Uh, and that is not something that I expected. So until this shakes out and I actually get a firm read on whether this is a Bill O'Brien offense, you know, mixed with, you know, him and Mac Jones just kind of being on the same page, I'm going to go with Tua and the over here because, look, I, one of my picks that I'm about to talk about or potential picks you know, you look at how they pass inside the red zone. I mean, the Dolphins, you know, they had, I think, four different receivers uh, with red zone targets 
and three with targets inside the 10 yard line. So, you know, I think just like Doug said, I mean, Raheem Mostert, while Jeff Wilson is on IR, I don't trust that running game uh, to score from short. So I'll count on the passing game. Not to mention uh, Pro Bowl left tackle Teron Armstead. Mm. He's been practicing a bit more. If he gets back out there in week two, that's going to just add that extra layer of pass protection and that the Dolphins will need going up against the stronger Patriots front. Brian, we got our second leg, or we got our first leg. We got to get our second leg. Tua over one and a half passing touchdowns. What are we eyeing for our second leg of this parlay? All right. So look at this one. It kind of goes, you know, hand in hand with uh, Doug's pick here. It's I'm going to go Tyreek Hill anytime touchdown. Now this one isn't a, it's not going to blow anyone's mind as far as how far down it goes, but I look at the rate in which New England plays man coverage. They play a high rate of man coverage and in man coverage. If you look at the target distribution on the Dolphins, almost two thirds of the targets are going in Tyreek Hill's direction. It's just a mismatch from the get go to try and play Tyreek Hill man. So I'm going to go Tyreek Hill anytime touchdown at plus 105. I think this is a great add to the uh, to the parlay. At least that'll be my first option. You can't go wrong with the Tyreek Hill anytime touchdown. It no. just feels almost like the Tony Pollard anytime touchdown right. version of the Dolphins. And mm-hmm. I'm all for it. I also feel like we might be able to juice up the parlay, get something else a little yeah. bit. So tell me about your second leg. Uh, maybe it's something that I might uh, be eyeing. All right. So look, I'm going to go Ramondre Stevenson anytime touchdown. Look, I know Ezekiel Elliott's in town. You know, he evenly split the red zone carries with Zeke. Zeke did fumble the ball. I know Bill Belichick is big on ball security. I just think this is a game where they're going to get Ramondre going early. And even if he's struggling in the rushing game and the game script goes sideways, he had six targets, six receptions last game. So he's heavily involved out of the backfield. So at least in that regard, I consider him game script proof. So I think Ramondre Stevenson has a big game. I like him to get in the end zone at least once this weekend. The best thing about Ramondre Stevenson is his ability to be used in the pass game. He was exactly. he caught all his targets last week. He had five rushing touchdowns last year and one receiving touchdown. Ramondre Stevenson is the running back one in this Patriots offense, despite Zeke heading over from Dallas. So we have two options. Tyree Kill, anytime touchdown. The Cheetah's already off to a good start. He says he wants to get to 2,000 yards. He's 10% there. Can he get a touchdown in week two? And number two, Ramondre Stevenson, anytime touchdown. The voting process begins. Three, two, one, present the note cards. Tyreek, Tyreek in a hill drawing from Tim. I was the one switching things up, trying to go with Ramondre Stevens, trying to get fancy. I'm all for it, guys. Let's go with Tyreek Hill. Can't go wrong. We're trying to win parlays here. That's the fun part. When you're building parlays, we talked about this last week. When you're building parlays, take the safer bets. That's where you're going to win. We're still going to get a good payout here. Tyreek Hill, anytime touchdown. Tim, much better drawing on round two. Why are you going with the cheetah? Which I would have appreciated a cheetah, but I'll take the hill. Why are you going with cheetah anytime touchdown? Yeah, Jack and Jill went up the hill. That's what I was thinking as, as I was drawing the little hill there. But Okay, yeah, I like it. Yeah, this is more really to me a fade of the Patriots secondary. I mean, it's it's been well noted. They've I read the practice report uh, this week. They're, they're banged up there as well. And even if they were at full strength, who wants to run with Tyreek Hill? Who can run with Tyreek Hill? To me, it's a no-brainer. I mean, this guy could run back and forth in the end zone 15 times and not um, be out of breath and, and still be wide wide open. Yeah, Tyreek's already talking a little smack, by the way. A reporter asked him this week, like, hey, how are you going to stack up against the Patriots defense? We know you've struggled. And he's like, I'm going to dominate. I'm going to get and do my routes. I'm going to get open. And I firmly believe that Tyreek Hill might not have over 200 receiving yards, but he's going to get in the end zone. I like this pick. Doug, why are you looking at Tyreek over Ramondre in this one? Yeah, Tim nailed it. Uh, The secondary for Belichick isn't a secondary we're used to seeing on the Patriots. There really isn't that lockdown corner. Uh, Yeah, he'll probably send help over the top against Tyreek. But Brian also mentioned the man coverage thing. Belichick loves playing man. And two is just laser focused on Tyreek when he sees man coverage because Tyreek could just run by anyone, even if he does get double covered. Um, I, I like him to find the end zone here. It feels like we're high on the Dolphins. I mean, I'm wearing my Miami shirt, so I'm feeling good about where we stand with the Dolphins. To recap where we're at right now, 
Tua over one and a half passing touchdowns. Tyree kill anytime touchdown. Tim, how are we going to finish off our parlay? What third leg are you looking at? Oh, well, Megan, Dolphins, 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 Dolphins. Here comes Tim. Patriots plus three. How about a play on the game? Look, <laughs> it makes you uncomfortable. It makes the hair on your neck stick up a little bit. And that's why I like it. I mean, when I was looking at the board I, in week two, I'm looking to bet 0-1 teams against 1-0 teams. We love to overreact in the NFL. Since 2005, teams that scored 28 or more points in week one, they've gone 57 84 and four the next week, week two. That's 40% against the spread. Shout out my guy, Evan Abrams, for that stat. And also, too, I'll give more love to the Action Network. Nick Giffen, Sean Kerner, their luck rankings told me that last week the Patriots were the unluckiest team in the NFL. The Dolphins were the eighth luckiest. That's a stat. I don't want to, you know, I don't care about the calculation that goes into that. That makes my head spin. But for me, <laughs> you tell me luck, unlucky. That's enough. Also, the Dolphins, weird spot here going from L.A. all the way back to Massachusetts. I know it's early in the season, but that's still never fun. So give me the Patriots here. Plus three. Again, makes you. Oof, oof. Tim, you've got my head spinning now. I didn't want to think this way. I felt so good about the Dolphins. And now you're bringing up stats. And now I'm thinking about Bill Belichick trying to slow this offense down. I'm thinking about how he's going to do better up front. And this is going to create a challenge for Miami. And maybe they can cover. However. However, Tua has been really good against this Patriots team and he's won all four games, but in three of the four games that Tua has played against New England, he's won by way over three points. Only one game did he win by under three points. I, I'm going to play devil's advocate. I'm crossing my fingers that I might like the second leg or the second option for this third leg a little better. So what are we, what are you presenting to us? Yeah, thanks, Megan, for reading that stat. I was hoping you wouldn't uh, <laughs> scroll all the way down in uh, the dock with our trends here. <laughs> really appreciate that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to stick Patriots again. I went 0-2 on Monday Night Football. I filled in for, for that show earlier this week. And so since I went 0-2, I, I wasn't – clearly I can't find it. I can't fly, find my fastball. I'm all over the plate. So I'm going to defer back to the group here. I don't know if we've ever done this before, but I don't think it was fair that Ramondre Stevenson, that prop got voted down. Ramondre Stevenson, anytime touchdown. It's like uh, getting a bad matchup in March Madness. I just, I don't think it was fair. I think Stevenson should still be on our list. So my two options, Patriots plus, two, plus three and Ramondre Stevenson, anytime touchdown. You guys pick. Tim, this is music to my ears. Ramondre Stevenson, he's back in the mix. I was bummed to see him go away. I like where your head's going. You're changing up the rules here at Action Island, and I love it. I'm here for it. Two options, Patriots plus three. Ramondre Stevenson, anytime touchdown, he's back in the vote. Let's get our pens and papers, fellas. Get to writing. Can we run it back? Can we run it back? Where are you guys looking at this one? Ramondre, Ramondre, and Brian says Ramondre. That's all we needed. We got him back in. We're not taking Patriots. We're looking back at the running back, and that's Ramondre Stevenson. Tim, you work this well. I like it. When we're confident on one of the other bets, let's bring it back in. There's no rules here. We can bring in whatever we'd like. Ramondre Stevenson, anytime touchdown. Doug, why were you looking at this over Patriots plus three? Kind of just lends to what we were all saying. You know, Ramondre, he's going to play a lot. Zeke did have that fumble last week that might cost him some playing time this week with Belichick. And Honestly, it's just that Chargers run defense. Chargers, I keep saying the Chargers. It's the Dolphins. That yes. Dolphins run defense uh, just doesn't look great. And I do think that Ramondre is going to get fed, especially when they get down towards the goal line. I completely agree. And even in the short screen passes, that's where we can also see Ramondre take off. There's a lot of options and a lot of ways the Patriots can utilize him. That's why he's so versatile in this offense. Uh, Brian, why were you looking at Ramondre over the Patriots to get the plus three? I, uh, you know what? I just don't, I don't love the, uh, the plus three number. And also, I mean, Ramondre Stevenson was like one, a one B with Tyree kill. Right. So reintroducing him kind of gets both my picks in. So I'm all on board. I'm feeling good. I, I don't want to jinx us, but is this a parlay that's going to hit? It feels like it. It feels like this might be the one that gets our Sunday night football crew tied up with our Thursday night football crew. Let's recap what we got Tua. 
over one and a half passing touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, anytime touchdown. Ramondre Stevenson, anytime touchdown. And when we add this all together, we get a payout of plus 430. I love it. And hey, as always, I'll throw in a little bonus bet for you. Right now, receiving props aren't up. I'm looking at Jalen Waddle over his receiving yard line. If it's anywhere 70 below, bet the over. Waddle's going to have a big game here. That's typically what we see whenever a star receiver like Tyreek Hill has one. Then it's it's his turn to step up. Granted, he did hit 78 last week, so it's not like Jalen Waddle didn't have a good game. If you want to add fuel to this parlay, consider the fourth leg. But for purposes of Action Island, our three-leg parlay stands. I'm excited, guys. I'm feeling good. Tim, Brian, Doug, AK, prop bet guy. Let's go cash some tickets. Good luck this weekend, and we'll catch you here next time on Action Island.